and welcome to the 360 Monthly Review. I'm Shay Russell and joining me today is precious metals expert Nick Frappel, who is the Global General Manager for ABC Bullion. Nick, how are you mate? Hi Shay. It's good to be here. Yeah, at last. You know. Yeah, well we've mm. talked uh, often, we've talked uh, you know, over the internet and now we're taking, chatting in person. Exactly. Mm. Now I have lots of questions for you about mm. the gold market today, yes. so let's dig in. First things first, what is going on with the US dollar price of gold? You know, it looked like it was going to break there and fall lower. Yes. But it's gone on a bit of an exciting rally in the past few days. What's going on? Well, I think um, one of the big drivers, you know, after the weak retail sales last Friday and, of course, the really poor jobs miss earlier in May, um, the market was basically seeing, you know, uh, lower yields, which helped drive the price up. But also, I think you started to see really decent um, short covering. So the last uh, CFTC numbers we looked at, half of the buying was actually people buying their shorts back and half was fresh longs getting in. So I think that's, that's largely it. It's, uh, it's kind of achieved the first target that we imagined from the double bottom in, mm -hmm. in, in March, April. Yep. That was around about um, well, quite close to here, 1844 actually. And then, uh, and then when we got that bad data, or weak, weak data, it kind of changed the whole optimism around the reflation trade. And that sort of said, okay, fine, you know, bond yields down, gold higher. So you touched on a couple of things I want to talk about there. Uh, first mm. of all, you talked about, uh, you know, big money buying back the shorts. Yes. So is this an indication that uh, big money's cottoned on, that, you know, maybe gold down days are over? I think so, to some extent, yeah. Um, what I'd say about that, though, is, is that only, if you look at the people who are just long, manage money longs, those guys aren't that long when you compare them to the historic highs. Mm -hmm. So they've got plenty more ammunition. If they really, really, really thought, okay, um, gold is absolutely going to roof it, then compared to the sort of historic maximum um, position they've held, they're less than half, I think, of that position, certainly in the managed money sector. So there's certainly a lot of scope for more commitment. Um, on the short covering side, you know, they actually probably did for a while have quite a good time riding that short and yep. riding the price lower. It just worked against them. So, you know, they had to, they had to get out. But that's a good little tidbit to take away from there that there's mm. room for the big money to get even longer if they wanted to. I think so, yeah. Yeah, if you compare it to, to past longs, definitely there's scope for more, more to arrive. Um, now, before we move on to a couple of the other questions I've got, I do love a Fibonacci, and I mm. know you love a Fibonacci. Yes, yeah. What's the Fibonacci chart telling you right now? Well, we've come to a, a pretty crucial point, I'd say, in this whole rebound. We've reached the 50% retracement of the August 2020 high um, to the March-April lows. That's a fairly big number. The next number, which is the 61.8, um, so a fair way away. I think it's in the 1900, low mm -hmm. 1900s. So we've reached that sort of crucial retracement level. And the other, the other level we've reached is we've just straddling the top of the weekly um, Ichimoku cloud. Mm -hmm. So both those things coming together suggest that gold might actually have, you know, possibly actually um, draw back a little bit. Mm -hmm. Saw a little bit of that um, on Wednesday night, mm -hmm. last night, um, went down to 1853. But it, uh, when that obviously, you know, partly influenced as well by the Fed um, minutes. Mm -hmm. But uh, after that, you know, it's quickly shot back again. There's a clearly quite a big sort of argument between, you know, buyers and sellers around this point, um, partly because of interpreting the, uh, what the Fed is trying to say and articulate in the markets, and also what the technicals are telling us. Look, that is a lovely lead in for my next question, oh, yeah. which is, you know, the inflation, uh, the inflation mm. trade. You know, there's mm. big shouty headlines in the press at mm. the moment. Yes. There's a lot of editorial space in financial papers yes. being dedicated to is inflation here? Mm. Now, inflation, you know, it can be written about like it's a big, scary beast. But mm. what are you seeing? So you've, you've mentioned the Fed have introduced taper yeah. back into their language. Yes. What do you think um, the Fed are trying to tell us? And is, is this the, the, the inflation trade that we should all be concerned about? I think the Fed is facing a little bit of reality when they talk about taper and also they've got to talk about it at some stage otherwise you know they've got to sort of moderate market reactions mm -hmm. and, and try and sort of influence and, and you know perhaps calm sort of likely you know anxieties before the event mm -hmm. and of course you know tapering isn't it's just a moderation of QE rather than a, a hard stop. Um, look clearly there is you know, there's plenty of inflationary signs out there. CPI was pretty high uh, last month. Mm -hmm. So it's not, it, it, by historic standards, we've, we've been in a phase of such, such low um, inflation. And every sort of deflationary thing that's come along, the Fed and other central banks have stepped in to try and prop things up. So 
it's not like a it's not a terrifying thing <laughs> but definitely there are signs the thing that's probably more important i guess and what people are trying to figure out is how will the bond markets um, react to more and more inflationary numbers will they drop off you know bonds have been in a massive bull run for you know over 20 years they're really really richly priced how's that going to work if if you know there's more and more inflationary pressure that's the thing that probably concerns people more than just the actual headline number so basically you're saying bond yield is contributing to the gold price movements at the moment yeah that's right mm. now before we wrap up today because we're going to run out of time in a minute mm. i want to talk about silver but before we talk about silver actually i wanted to talk about the gold to silver ratio oh, so yeah. there are some people yes. who follow it we can talk about the merits of the gold to silver ratio another time yeah. but what are you seeing happening in the gold to silver ratio right now it's been ranging and I expect it to carry on ranging. Um, sort of 62, 63 looks quite rich in terms mm -hmm. of um, silver valuation versus gold. Mm -hmm. um, 72, 73, you know, just if you look at in sort of this year uh, from memory, looks, uh, looks like that's a, you know, a fairly weak valuation mm -hmm. of silver. Not really seeing any signs that it would move outside that range. You know, we had that amazing period where it was over 100. Yes. And, uh, of course, you know, silver looked relatively so incredibly cheap. It's uh, outrageous. Yep. Um, but in terms of the sort of higher valuations, I'm bullish of silver. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I'm seeing it in the context of, you know, 63. Yeah. Not, not sort of really beyond that. Can go beyond that, but mm -hmm. it starts to look pretty richly valued at that point. And let's wrap up on our final question. Mm. Silver price, it's quite topical at the moment. Yeah. You know, the price of silver has been dominating the headlines for the yes. past three months, mm. or at least for precious metals nerds like you and I. Yes. Where is it going? Have you changed your view in the past 30 days? No, I'm still, I'm still you know, bullish mm -hmm. and uh, still think, you know, it's the key levels, obviously, 30, just over 30 US dollars. Mm -hmm. uh, that target, 40, um, 40, 41, that we've got, very long-term target, still there. Uh, I'm, you know, positive about silver. Um, it might come under a little bit of pressure if, you know, if gold, you know, anytime gold comes under pressure, silver generally should. Mm -hmm. Also, I think um, copper, um, which has had a tremendous tear lately, yep. silver does look at copper some of the time. Mm -hmm. So we've got to keep an eye on that. Um, but yeah, broadly, still bullish. Wonderful. Yeah. Look, Nick, that's all we've got time for today. Mm. I want to say thank you very much for no, thanks, joining Jay. me. Cheers. And thank you all for watching. Make sure you follow us on socials. Of course, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Happy trading from abcbullion.com.